I realized recently through an interaction with a student that there may be an incomplete understanding of the arguments object that is associated with functions. So we are diving into that today. We will use an example of a function that must deal with an unknown number of inputs. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript. As I always say, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. And remember, the discount links to all my courses are in the description section. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, I've provided a Patreon link. One more thing, I've begun publishing JavaScript articles on Medium, so if you would like additional resources, please follow me there. All right, so every function created in JavaScript has access to an arguments object that contains all the values of the arguments passed into that function. Though not used in every function, this feature can be invaluable for certain applications. Now, the arguments object is array-like, but it is not an array. That is the most important distinction. So let's take a look at that first. So let me first set up a function. I'm going to call it sum everything because eventually that's what we're going to have it do. Anything passed in, it doesn't matter how many numbers, it's going to sum them all. But initially, all I want to do, so I'm just going to log to the console, arguments. This is how we access the arguments object inside of a function with the keyword arguments. All right, now let's go ahead and call that. Uh, let's see, we'll just pass in six like that up to six okay so here is our function we're going to log out the arguments object so we can take a look at it so let's go ahead and do that refresh that and open the console and here's our arguments object if we open it up it does look array like it looks like it is an array the way it's indexed here notice we also have a length property and that's something that we see in an array as well so how do we know that this is not an array? Well, let me just make a, an adjustment here. If I come up here and I do pop, obviously a method on arrays for popping off the last object in the array. If I refresh that, we get this error message that pop is not a function. So that right there is a key that this is not an array. However, we can address individual arguments like we would an array. So I can do something like that, and that should display four. So if I come out here, now I get four being displayed. So it works very much like an array, though it isn't. Now, what about that symbol.iterator? When we're looking at the arguments object, did you notice the symbol.iterator? Let me display that again. Get rid of this part here. And we'll refresh it. We can take a look at that again. So if I open this up, you can see down here, symbol.iterator. Okay, what is that? Well, this specifies the default iterator for an object. And basically, this makes the arguments object iterable. And by that, we simply mean that we can use the for of loop with it. We can loop through all of the values that are stored in the arguments object. So that means we could do something like this. I'm going to remove my console log and we're going to add all these together now. So I'm just setting up a variable of TOT for total and setting it equal to zero. And then here we have our for of loop. Here's where I specify arguments. So we're going to loop through all the arguments that have been passed in. And all we're going to do is add them to total like that. And then I think we'll just return that variable. Okay. Now let me just modify down here so we can see that it does total everything up. I'm going to do a console log on the call to this function. All right. So if we jump out here and refresh, we can see that it sums that up. So we're able to use the for of loop on the arguments object because of the default iterator that is a 
assign to that object using symbol.iterator, okay? So it, it makes it iterable. Now, with this particular type of thing, this type of application here where I'm summing everything up, I prefer doing it with the reduce method of arrays. However, as we've said, this is not an array. So we'll get an error message if we use reduce on arguments. Well, we can simply convert that to an array. That's something we can do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. I'm going to comment this one out. And we're going to do this again, the same function. We're just going to do again. But this time, I will use reduce method. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use the array.from static method on arguments. And that will convert arguments to an array. Basically, array.from creates an array from whatever's passed in. And so it's going to create an array out of that. So now that we have an array, I can use the reduce method like that. Now, with the reduce method, we have to pass in a callback function. And that callback function has at least two parameters. It can have more than that, but it must have at least. One is accumulator value. This is basically the total. It's equal to what I did up here. This is where we're going to add everything to. And then this is each of the arguments, each of the values that were passed in, cycling through them one at a time. Let me just finish my function here. So all I need to do now is just add those together like that. Now, with the reduce method, we usually have a second parameter besides a callback. And this just initializes this value here to something. So I'm going to initialize it to 0. All right. So this should give us the same thing. So if we save that, we get 21. So I was able to do that because I converted the arguments object to an array. Now, one more thing. If you look up the arguments object in the MDN docs, it has a little note that says the rest parameter should be preferred. Now, what does that mean? Well, basically what it's saying is you should use the rest operator instead of the arguments object. So I want to show that really quick because that even simplifies this more. So once again, I'm going to copy and redo this. So when it says use the rest, well, we're what we're going to do here is use the rest operator up here, and we're going to combine everything that's passed in. That's what this is doing. Bring everything that's passed in, all these numbers that are passed in, into an array. And that's what we're going to call it. That's, what, that's the variable that's going to store it. Okay. So now we can simply replace all of this with ARR. Whoops because that is now all of the arguments in an array. So we didn't have to convert them. And as noted in the MDN docs, this is actually the preferred way of doing this. So that should give us the same results. So take a look again, refresh, and we do get 21. So there you go, an in-depth discussion of the arguments object plus what we can do with it and a preferred method for dealing with those arguments. In more modern JavaScript code, that REST operator is a preferred method. All right, if you are looking for more JavaScript content, remember the discount links to all my courses in the description section. I've got a brand new course that is getting great reviews you may want to check out. Click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release new tutorials as often as I can. And thanks for watching.